It's come down to this. Group stage about to be decided by a best of three between B, Baldsun, Kiljardi, and Dim. And we kick off on Cliffside. Remember, two shall fall and two shall rise. And this time, there's no switch through. Either Dumu and Kiljardi will win the tiebreaker or B and Baldsun will. Man, this is going to be a tight one as well. Definitely a balanced matchup. Balatoon definitely has like an edge in these 2v2 environments. On paper, Dumu should be the favorite of all four players. B, always a wild card. And in these 2v2 formats, that's something that could work to his advantage. Abbasid and Ichari is peculiar though. I don't think we've seen much that before so far in the 2v2 tournament. Something we have seen, I think, twice so far. And both times, it was insanely powerful, was English-French. English-French is an absolute classic of 2v2s and a very powerful one because the idea is with basically two of the best units in Feudal in Knights and Lombos you can essentially walk up the center and wedge yourself between the enemy base and attack each player individually. Curious to see what B and Baltoon's response to this is going to be. I love how I just got all this talk going about Warhammer 40k as well. I'm such a nerd dude. I'm there with Henry Cavill nodding my head all the time. I absolutely love 40k. I was talking to a friend recently on like a, a work call. He's like, he's talking about his army. He's like, and I just tell, tell him all these facts. Like, oh, I didn't realize you knew 4k so much. Like, damn right I do, baby. <laughs> Lived and breathed it. I got hooked as a kid. I got my own little armies hidden in a box at, uh, upstairs somewhere. Dawn of War really was the hooker. And I probably binge way too much lore. I want another Dawn of War that's good. So, anyway, we've got Skull Cavalry Council coming in. It is going to be that double aggro build we were just alluding to. Other side, we've got Greed from B, though. Eco Wing coming in. Arkin is the logical Greed for Baltin. And it is on the tree lines. So this is Mass Archers, which makes sense. Usually, you want to build Mass Archers against Lombos because you can run them down. Atri actually easily beats Lombos in a long feudal because you're able to spam. The tricky part about this, which makes the French English combo so powerful, is Baltoon can't just build Archers. He's going to have to build Spears as well. And Spears having to be built against a, a lineup that has Lombos. You feel like you're just punishing yourself. Curious to see what B's going to do in this game, though. Fog Crescent is already in the way. We're going to get 2 TC. Probably out here. That's a jackpot right there. Um, you could do 1 on 4 to secure the gold if you want to fast castle. But I could see value in just playing like Mass Horsemen. Don't think you go Camel Archers here. Um, maybe 1 just for the debuff. But I don't think you need to max out on them. So this is pretty cool because I think with the options these two players have on each side, you're going to have a very micro-intensive fight. And the thing that I enjoy when you get those type of matchups where everyone is in on the Feudal Age is the back and forth affair. It's not all in the agency of one player. And what I mean by that is communication and timing is important. When these fights clash, you're not thinking about one player controlling his knights and his archers and knowing the exact timings of the in and outs. You're talking about two players having to find that pristine, perfect synergy to not screw over the other. I think what ramps up that danger as well is the knights on one side and the marching drills on the other. It means just to slip up for a second can decide these fights. Stable's opening horsemen on the way. And this is to intercept the Lombos. Dumu's already made the right choice, though. In 1v1s, you try to send the first few Lombos over one by one. In 2v2s, it's too far. So you just have to hold them back. Usually, a lot of the time, you'll see this build done, where you hold until, like, 10 Lombos before you even come out. Knights are allowed to roam for free, though. Love that Baltin's already reacting, defending on the east side. Understood that the pressure will be coming into B's base, because realistically, the expectation is Baltin will have spears. Nice shift away. It's about to. We'll be able to protect this. Does take a little bit of damage on one of those villagers. I'm curious. How are we looking on the sheep count? So it looks like we've got a healthy 17... Uh, 17? Sorry. 13 here for Demu. Kill Jardy is only on 9, which is not ideal. It's going to be 9 for the HRE as well. But Baltin, of course, already adding in farms to supplement that. And then 16... Oh, sorry. 16 actually for him. It's 9 for B. But B has the berries to kind of supplement. And we will get that second TC soon, right? Imagine it's going to be out here. 
I say that. He hasn't gone for stone yet. Wow. Okay, so B... You know what I think happened here, guys? I think B thought that this was going to be 2TC English, and he was mirroring. Logic being that his is more efficient because his villages cost less, so it's less burden on his economy, and then your castle age timing should kind of match up against English. But now, this faux crescent play kind of feels worthless. You could technically still sneak, uh, sneak a second TC eventually, but you need to justify it first, and you do that by getting an initial win. It's an interesting discussion going on about RTSs at the moment and like the the place in the wider ecosystem. And I agree, like there are some RTSs doing well. Age of Mythology has basically had the cleanest launch of any Age of Title in the last ten plus years. Um, Age of Empires for I wouldn't say it's in a great spot. It's doing okay, but it realistically could have been doing a lot better with good marketing. I think RTSs have potential. But one thing I, I was saying earlier before we hopped in this game, and I think it holds true, and I'd love to get people's comments on YouTube about it later. I think RTSs are still chasing the golden cart of 15 years ago, right? Like someone watching someone chase after the Age of Empire 1 relics to try and catch them. And they're not focused on how you make the experience more accessible. And people hate the word accessible nowadays because they think it, they mean less skillful. And it doesn't. It means a reasonable change in what the skill is. Right? Because if you don't find new and different ways for people to improve a skill, you cause gatekeeping. Like, if you still have Age of Empires 2 chugging on 20 years from now, no new players can get into that game. Like, the, the entry barrier is so insanely high at that point. That's why I keep saying Battle Aces is really good for the entire industry. It might not be for every pro, and some might hate it, but it's fun, it's intuitive, and if you've never played an RTS before, it's like Fisher Price's first RTS. It's perfect. It allows you to just focus on one element and learn, right? It's kind of like, you know, the macro. So you learn the micro equivalent there, right? Like the macro equivalent is like when you go to play like an Anno type game in some ways, or that's still complicated. If you're just able to focus on the Sim CES, you get a feel for economy to kind of invite you into that strategy sphere. Other thing I actually think RTSs are lacking is good campaigns, by the way. I legit think that, like, campaigns has taken a back foot in a really negative way in the industry. Not just for RTSs, but I think RTSs suffers more than any other game type. Because, like, Call of Duty not having a campaign isn't, like, industry ending because you can just kind of pick up and learn in 10 minutes, right? But the amount of pain and punishment and misunderstanding of trying to learn an RTS from scratch about a good campaign is horrifying. I think you'll find a big part of why Age of Myth will do reasonably well with its launch or retold is because the campaign is the classic one that's slapped. So we're starting to approach the 10-minute mark. And the Camel Archer strategy is coming online, guys. Now, normally this is powerful, but the Lombos are a big threat here. I mean, which Lombos being chased by the Spears right now. And B coming in behind. Check this grab. Oh my god. Kiljardi doesn't have enough Knights here to hold it back. Dumu at risk of losing everything. What a turn. Camel Archer is now being targeted down, but the Horseman just wailing on what's left here. Dumu getting picked to the bone for the offensive play. And you know, we talked about B looking for that opening to be allowed to go for 2TC. This might be it. What a strikeout. Like, this is the kind of insane part, right? It's like even Spears, which usually don't work very well against Lombos, the thing that matters here is just the movement speed. That gap close was absolutely absurd. It felt like the Lombos could do no right there. Great defensive play by B and Balotin. Does kind of show that awkwardness of just how powerful being the defender can be as well. They just kind of allow Dimu to overextend and ultimately get punished for it. Now, from here, I mean, there's options on the table, right? Baltoon is getting ready for Castle Age. B could even consider second TC and playing a longer feudal. I think for now, he's just going to keep scaling Camel Archers. Did lose a lot of them, but the one worrisome issue is Kiljardi's knight count. A lot of them weren't there. He's at 17 knights right now. However, with not that many archers to back him, 
diving Baotu might be difficult. I do think them being split is a problem here, though. They're going to mop up these knights, but they need to move right across back home to Baotu's base. Because while he's about to tech up, a push is now coming in from the Brit and the Finn. Yeah, I'm just going to say what everyone's thinking. And this is from someone who's like one of the biggest Relic fans in the early years. Like, if you check early 2000s Relic, they were as good as Blizzard. I wholly believe that. Dawn of War is still, I'd say, a top five RTS for me of all time. Company Heroes 1 was incredible. I've heard incredible things nonstop about Homeworld. But if you look at the Relic of the last... 10 years? I don't think even Dawn of War 2 was that good. Campaign was alright, everything else, and Last Stand was good. The rest sucked. Dawn of War 3 was terrible. AU4's launch was terrible. They sadly have lost the, the special fire. If AOE4 got the type of marketing it had at launch now, I genuinely think it could start to rival StarCraft. Balotin, oh my god, it's happening again! <laughs> this is wild! So wait, wait, let me just check that. Longbows count as spears, right? Right? No. <laughs> you know, normally English lose this matchup against HRE because they spam archers that gap close you. But the spearmen are just as impactful here. Absolutely wild. Tech up is trying to complete here. Looks like Killjot, he has sniffed it out though. And Baltoon sent everything on the front side. Finally, Spears are arriving to defend this. So he will be able to get back and resume the tech up. But once again, Dumu attempts to come in and do some serious damage. But once again, he gets swatted away like an annoying fly. And good point coming up from Wicked Skies. So, to the point of Wicked Skies making of why Lombos counter worse than normal archers, it's the attack speed difference and the movement speed. You're not able to kite, you're not able to start a step as easily. Spearmen quickly gap close you. So, it's a trade that isn't as good. In small numbers, Lombos destroy Spearmen. But when you just get a giant slab of these boys together, they slap. Knights also starting to fall off a little bit. I mean, we've got Guildhall coming, so right choice by Kiljardi. I don't think he's going to be able to keep the knight scaling up. Not with the fact that B will eventually trend into castles, still have camels here to debuff him, and the fact that you're up against so many spears. With this tech out complete, they really need to keep the pressure up. They can't allow Baltoon to now get access to all those relics. Yeah, the reason why Lombos work good in small numbers and not well in large numbers, it's not just the gap close and whatever, it, the attack speed, it's also the overkill. Because your Lombos are going to overkill more easily than normal archers, right? Because you have higher base damage and higher bonus damage. It's one of those weird situations. Like I've highlighted this before with Lombo versus Yumi. Is Yumi, all Yumi strats should be quite effective against Lombos because you overkill Yumi constantly. So the only way you can stop Yumi from becoming a problem is by applying pressure. And that's where Lombos and 2v2s are more awkward. Because to apply that pressure, you need to move fast. It's a big map to cover. And you, as we saw at the start of this, can't run out straight away. So you're pretty much sacrificing your most potent point, which is the initial 10 to 15 units, to wait for a time when it's not too risky to move out. Double tech now. So Kiljardi already in age free. Dimu is about to catch up. B is still the question mark. I think he's spending a bit too much time in age two. Especially now that it's going to take him almost two minutes guaranteed to get up. No, I agree. I agree about the visual point being discussed in chat. I've said this with AOE4. I think AOE4 does struggle on the visuals a little. I said about the visual acuity before. Like, credit to them. Like, you, you need to know what StarCraft units are. But once you know them, I have felt that when you watch it, it looks more flashy, but you can also tell the units more easily, I feel like. And some people may disagree with that, but like, I am someone who's watched some StarCraft. And I can tell the units very quickly. The interesting thing is like, to someone who's never played an RTS before, 
AoE 4 will be easier to read than StarCraft, though. Because StarCraft has created a bunch of fictional un verse units that you've never heard of or seen before, right? Whereas, like, AoE 4 has that very natural understanding of, oh, that's that's a guy on, on horseback with a spear. He probably gets countered by a spear. Right? Or, like, oh, that archer probably counters those melee units, right? It just kind of naturally makes sense, boys. I think also there's been generations of that triangle that supports that, like AoE 2, Age of Mythology. They always have, always have these elements of like count units, right? Like, ah, oh, yes, a Hoplite will kill the, uh, will kill like the horseback units, right? Makes sense. Lombos will kill villagers. Makes sense. By the way, I just want you guys to process that B is now only building a second TC at 17 and a half minutes, still in Age 2. He went Eco Wing. This is not good. Despite all the longbows lost by Dimu, I don't think it matters anymore. It's because splatter in time. Veterancy on the longbows is in. Baltoon needs to defend this right now or his teammate is dead. B tries to march forward, but horsemen against vet longbows, it's not going to go well. You just die so fast. Like, look at that. 10 damage. You only have free ranged armor. It's pathetic. Chase is on, but... He's got to send them at arms. He doesn't want to trade out. Too many spin would die here. And they still have to worry about Kiljardi, who's been scaling mass knights nonstop. Even these little spin at arms, though, don't feel like they're doing enough. Only the plus one, so half damage is going through. <laughs> this is crazy. The, the polar opposites of Lombos in this game. We've seen them look completely dog crap, and we're now seeing them dominate everything. The dualities of Dumu's Lombos. I know he's going to be smiling as well. Like, Dumu loves it anytime he can have a game where he only builds Lombos. He's the player I've most consistently seen queue up 100 Lombos. These men at arms are trickling as well. I don't like this. We have at least got the plus two range down now for Baltin, so should trade a little bit better, but this has been expensive. Just so many MAA, now MIA from the living world. Still idle time being achieved as well. Like B lost some economy. He got idled out constantly. And this is just drawing attention away from the mid map, which is important because we should be having a play for relics coming. You can see Kiljali now queuing up the monks. Need to be quick about it though, right? It's two relics home already. Third one now there. Probably a four relic game. Maybe five if Baltin's quick. Keep in mind, this is also 2TC for French. So the HRE's relics are powerful here, but the eco lead is getting big. All attempts going to be a wall of nope. Kiljardi now just riding in. However, he needs to get out. You, I think you just rotate south here because the walls and get the hell out. Weirdly enough, he's brazen here. He charges even deeper. <laughs> Remember, guys, these spearmen move... Quicker than knights when they charge. They will reach you, so you can't hang around. It looks like Baltoon didn't realize it. Didn't actually go in line formation and try to cut off the retreat. So Kiljardi, credit to him, man. He milked that cow until it bled. Able to just weave his way out the other side. Longbow way follow up his idol in the farms. Guys, this game is over. I think B is just a non-factor at this stage. He has four military units in his total. Baltin is doing the best he can to try and carry this. But you're against the full premium army. It's Lombo, Crossbow, and Knights. There is nothing weak about what Blue and Purple are doing here. What's going up, though? <gasps> this could be big. If... If containment protocol is complete. B... <laughs> Oh no, Kiljardi. Okay, but here's the thing, guys. It's 15 knights trapping 40 melee units chasing them, right? So what does Dimu do? Life gives you lemons. Make lemonade, baby. Starts the move in. Second wave of knights is already rallying up. Crossbows are in the mix as well. So the men at arms are going to start to trade worse and worse here. B almost complete with the culture wing, but the trade-off is going to be Baltoon losing access to the farms in the next minute. He doesn't have enough men at arms coming. And the knights, 
desperately trying to break out are finally going to get caught here. But I think they bought enough time. This move in, this blocker, Baotun is not going to have access to the food he needs to get the men at arms numbers up. He is down to just seven of these guys. This is mass Lombos, and the only thing he's got left over is Spears. And I may have watched Spears beat Lombos twice already, but I think three times is one time too many. <laughs> what a game to open this set. Tiebreaker, by the way. Remember, so much to still play for here. Dumu, a classic. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Ram's even been built up now. I mean, B, he has one military. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. It's been a sad game for him. This is what we talked about, about the idea of camel arches as well. Like, scaling camel arches is delicate. If you screw up one fight, you can lose the entire game. Reproducing that army is so difficult. Even compared to French Knights, right? The School of Cavalry, you just have this ability to pump them out so much quicker. The Bastards don't have that until Hyper Late Game. They don't compare until they've got Golden Age 3 and Military Academy. You won't have either of those things in Feudal Age. Final defense coming from Baltoon. Marches forward with the spears and the men at arms. Notice the knights are going to peel back for the time being. They can come in afterwards. But the rams are just absorbing so much attention. It splits the army into two. And it means that Dumu is going to be able to start a step his way to victory. With moves like this, this man must be majestic on the dance floor. Kiljardi now coming in for the kill and blow. GG gets called. Lombo simultaneously underpowered and overpowered in the same game.